Well, hello and welcome. I'm Cindy Daychuk with Queen Bee Creations. Thank you for tuning in to the channel today. We have a fun project for outdoors. We're kind of going into the uh, spring, summer mode, so my head is kind of spinning with that. And with all ideas, a lot of times this kind of kicks in with stuff I have hanging around the shop more than anything else. So, you know, I've always got things that I've picked up thrifting or I've gotten from auctions and sometimes they come with other things. And so, um, I think that you saw I had a bunch of silver plated spoons as one of my thrift flip videos. I had done those up in a frame um, on some burlap and things, really loved that one. But I also had some old, really old kind of tarnished silver plated forks. So three, four, five forks and one little kind of butter knife. And, and I love teapots. I love tea. That's my, my drink of choice. And I love finding cool, old silver plated teapots. This one's super cool because it's got such a, a great embellishment on it. I love decorating with these. I love, um, you know, opening this up and having different floral arrangements in them. Not everybody does. I don't like to clean them. I love to leave them with the patina on, but they're not that hard to find. It's pretty easy to find a variety of different old silver plated teapots and coffee pots and sugar bowls and creamers and that sort of thing um, in the thrift stores. So very accessible, same thing with old cutlery. Um, so I was thinking, let's do something else with it than just stick some flowers in it. And what I'm thinking is using this with the cutlery and make a really cool wind chime. It sounds, it sounds cool, and I, and I don't think it's gonna be hard, but we'll see, we'll see. Now, the first thing that we have to do is we have to drill some holes in the metal, which does mean you need to get a metal drill bit if you do not have one already. So a wood one will not do it, um, and, and I've got one that's a fairly, fairly fine tip, uh, better to see this way, but obviously the size of the bit is going to determine the size of the hole. And you just want something that's big enough that you can, you can use it. And that is going to not be so big that it overwhelms the end of your cutlery. Right? I also have some old chain. Well, it's not old chain. It's like old kind of patinaed looking chain um, that I picked up from, I think I got this from the dollar store. So I'm gonna hang these. I mean, you could use fishing line if you'd like. I'm gonna hang it with the metal. And because this is all old and patinaed, I thought that this kind of patinaed brassy stuff would kind of work well with it. So my thinking is this, I am going to drill a hole in the end of each of my pieces of cutlery. And because I have the five forks, I don't know why I couldn't think of the word fork for whatever reason. Um, because of that, I'm going to drill five holes around the rim. I'm, I'm gonna try to drill five holes around the rim. That's kind of curvy, we'll see how I do. Um, but what I did do, you can see here, is I traced out the base of this, and then I kind of worked on, dr on, on drawing five fairly equitably spaced spots so that I could see them, and that I can then take a Sharpie and just sort of thinking which way do I want this? And then I can kind of roughly just draw in up above each of those 
where my little holes are gonna go. Because once I get started, I'm really not gonna have a clue. And I think it's easier to create that spacing on a flat surface. So, that's how I came up with where the holes go on that one. I will be having to do, just thought I'd take one final look on this. It's an old English reproduction. Okay, silver plate. Um, and then I'm gonna drill a hole in the middle that I'm going to hang the knife from. So the knife will be in the center, the forks will all be and roughly all hanging about the same height. And then we will need to drill some holes into the lid that we will hang the chain from. And then obviously that would cause the lid to open. So then we will be sealing the lid. And I will also seal or plug this um, when I'm done, just so that again, it's not all constantly filling up with rainwater but we should have this hanging so it's fairly flat. We'll see, we'll see. The, the weight could be off, I might have to adjust that. But first things first, we need holes. So what I am doing with the holes is because this drill bit is not like as pokey, <laughs> pokey sharp. Oh, I am very tool challenged, guys. Okay, so because it's not as um, pointy as a wood bit is, I am just, okay, sorry about the noise, but I'm just kind of creating a little bit of a divot hole in there that will hold this kind of in place. So I've got a place to go. And I'm doing it over some wood because it's ultimately going to go through down into the wood and not into my table, right? Awesome. Back it out. And there we have it. So, little hole. All right. And you get these little, little metal shavings. What I will do is I will take um, like a little Dremel sanding tip. It's a little sharp on the back, it's nice and flat here, or just sand it down. You can, you can take a sanding block and just kind of sand it down too, whichever works for you, whatever you have, just so they've got a smooth surface and it's not constantly wearing as it's in motion. But I have those holes to do through all of these. I'll, I'll bring you back as I do some of these just so you can see whatever method I finally figure out works best to drill those holes. But really, this should be a fairly quick little project. Although I always say that and, and sometimes they prove me wrong. But <laughs> the holes, I have the holes in the cutlery down pat now. So that should be okay. We'll see how the holes in the curved surface of the teapot go. Now, on the top, there's already one little hole in it which was from the steam hole. So I'm just going to make it just a tiny bit bigger. Okay, not that much bigger, because my holes are about the same. And I'm going to look to kind of put my next hole, just sort of roughly directly across from it, equidistant from the rim. Good word, right, equidistant. See how that goes. All right, I gotta tell you, I thought that the drilling was gonna be the hardest part, so that's done. That worked great. I did take um, just a little bit of a grinding tool on my Dremel to this. Um, yeah, don't touch the metal to see if it's ground down or not um, after you use this, because it's really hot. Ask me how I know. 
All right, so that is perfect. Now, as for the chain, I'm gonna have to go and collect up some tools for this um, because I'm gonna need to have some chain cutters and things. And the links in this are not long enough on their own to go through my holes necessarily. So I do need to have a way to attach them to that and have a way to attach them to this. So what I'm saying is that my links are smaller than this. So I need to create an attachment onto this that would then link into my chain, uh, both on this end and on this end. And I could do that with just a little bit of wire. Um, I'm thinking of old jewelry making supplies. I don't have any jump rings that would be that big. So I am just going to get a little bit of wire and do that. So let me get um, some pliers and some cutters and then we'll come back and we'll put this together. So look how quick, that's really how quick this is going to be. It's awesome. I'm going to heat up my glue stick as well. And then we'll be all set to finish this off together. I wanted to just quickly walk you through the next steps that I took. I found some galvanized wire and I've taken a dowel and I'm wrapping the wire in a circular motion around the dowel. In essence, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some open jump rings. So I just wanna have enough twists along the dowel that when I start cutting the rings off, okay, so I'm just gonna cut them flush that I, I, in essence, create these rings with an open section that I can then put through the holes. So here I'm cutting my chain and what I elected to do was in eight inch lengths, just kind of eyeball what makes sense to you relative to where you're going to hang it. And I'm cutting the chain enough for all of my forks and my knife to have equal lengths. Once that's done, I'm going to take my jump ring, put it through the chain, and put it through the hole that I drilled on the end of each of the pieces of cutlery. So each of them gets the jump ring, and I'm just making sure that I overlap the cut ends of the jump ring to ensure that when they move in the wind, nothing's going to fall through any of that section. Then. I'm taking the same jump rings that I made, same size, putting them through the other end of the chain and putting them through the hole that I drilled on the bottom of the teapot. So I'm gonna do this for each of the forks which go around that outside base of the teapot. I'm going to need to be doing something different for that center hole that I drilled because that one isn't accessible by a jump ring. So we're just gonna go around the the outside circumference of the base of the teapot and attach all five of the forks. What I have got is just a piece of wire and I'm taking my round nose pliers and I am just grabbing one end of this and I am slowly twisting this down into a whoops down into a spiral and then let me just push it in together so in essence i'm just creating like a big ball of wire so that it's bigger than my hole so if i poke it down through i now have a hole sticking out the bottom and the idea now is that I can create a loop down here that um, if I create a loop that I can hang my jump ring. I couldn't think of the word. My jump ring from. So I am just going to 
twist this around that to create enough of a loop and then wrap it back around itself. Okay, just so that I can close it off properly. It's a little bit awkward on this bottom just because it's indented, right? And then I'm just gonna cut the excess off. There we go. And what I'm left with is just a little tiny loop there that my junk ring It keeps turning around in a circle here, so let me get another finger to hold it in place. And then I can just close my jump ring the same way that I did the others. And then that will allow my knife to hang there. Oh, that sounds good. Okay, so in essence, what I'm gonna do is exactly the same thing on the lid. I'm gonna take two pieces of wire, let me get another piece here, that I can cut. Make a little loop. And then these two will come up through the top. So that loop on the bottom is gonna hold it in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to roll this down so that I can, let me cut this off so now it won't fall through. I can take this little loop and I can just roll it down more. And then that creates a little loop on top that I can put my jump ring through. So that what I'm looking at doing oops. okay so we'll do one on each side stay <laughs> and then I'm going to take my jump ring and attach a little bit of a little bit of my chain to either side have them meet in the middle and attach up to the to each other so that there's a single chain to be able to hang it from. And then I'll put a jump ring on the very top so that we've got a bigger ring that um, would allow it to kind of attach onto a hanger of some kind. Right? And I forget how. how long that was actually. And it was about seven inches. Okay, so I need never, another seven inch piece. Here. get this side done and now it's time for us to close up our teapot because now I'm gonna want I'm just gonna link my jump ring into wherever it makes sense for it to hang because I'm not sure that this is evenly weighted from left to right so I want to be able to hold this where it's gonna hold straight 
but I need to be able to seal it up to be able to do that. So I'm gonna take my glue gun and go around this rim. And I'm being a little bit careful because I don't wanna have big globs of it sticking out when I close it up, but I do need enough to stick it down. What I do have is I have two jump rings attached to those little loops that I created. And then this is just one chain going from one side to the other. Here, another one of those jump rings we made attached to a longer piece of chain with a couple of jump rings on the end to be able to attach into a hook. And then that's it. Now, I did hot glue this down and then I did take some crazy glue around the rim just to be able to um, hold it in place. And then there's my wind chime. And it just makes a lovely sound. So cute. I love this. I'm keeping this. <laughs> this is going in my backyard for the summer. Um, I will take some pics of it, but guys, this was super easy. The whole key to it is um, you need an electric drill and you need a metal drill bit. That's all. The chain was from the dollar store. The teapot and the cutlery was thrifted. Um, and, you know, in my thrift store here, you can get these for under $10. So... The whole thing maybe cost me about $15, $15 tops to be able to make. And I love it so much nicer than some of the other um, looking wind chimes. And definitely for me with a teapot and how, how much I love tea, definitely something that works for me. I'm going to test out whether or not this is water, um, not water safe, waterproof. Um, and if it is, then I will take some hot glue and I will and, and I will plug this up. Hot glue or maybe a cork or something. I just want to check and make sure. I don't want to plug this up and then find that actually some water seeps in there and then it gets full of water and I have no real easy way to get it out. Um, but I think that just putting a little, little plug in there that I could remove if I need to is, is perfect. So let me know what you think of this one, guys. I'm in love with it but I was a little predisposed to love it <laughs> because I was making it for me. But tell me what you think. Love to hear from you. And definitely, I appreciate your tuning in. Check out the website, queenbeecreationshome.com for paint and supplies or home decor and, and painted furniture. Love it if you do. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, take care. <laughs>